Hello friends. Welcome to We United YouTube channel. I am very happy to see you. My name is Bhagav Reddy and I am your instructor today. Welcome to the world of robots. In this video we are going to discuss on the topic what robots are and their definition and how they came into existence. At first, the word robot is of Slavic origin. For instance, in Russian, the word Pasix Ota, Robota, means labor or work. Its present meaning was introduced by the Czechoslovakian dramatist Karel Kapek in the early 20th century. In a play entitled R.U.R., Rossum's Universal Robots, Kapek created automated substitutes for human workers, having a human outlook and capable of human feelings. Historically, in fact, the concept robot appeared much later than the actual systems that are entitled to answer to that name. Our problem is that there is as yet no clear, efficient, and universally accepted definition of robots. If you ask 10 people what the word robot means, 9 will most likely reply that it means an automatic humanoid creature something like that shown in figure. Or they will describe a device that may be more accurately denned as a manipulator or an automatic arm as shown in figure. Encyclopedia Britannica gives the following definition. A robot device is an instrumented mechanism used in science or industry to take the place of a human being. It may or may not physically resemble a human or perform its tasks in a human way, and the line separating robot devices from merely automated machinery is not always easy to define. In general, the more sophisticated and individualized the machine, the more likely it is to be classed as a robot device. Other definitions have been proposed in a glossary of terms for robotics, prepared for the Air Force Materials Laboratory, Wright-Patterson AFB, by the U.S. National Bureau of Standards. Some of these definitions are cited below. Robot Robot is a mechanical device which can be programmed to perform some task of manipulation or locomotion under automatic control. Here we have to note, the meaning of the words, can be programmed, is not clarified. Programs can differ in their nature, and we will discuss this aspect later in greater detail. Industrial Robot A programmable, multifunction manipulator designed to move material, parts, tools, or specialized devices through variable programmed motions for the performance of a variety of tasks. Pick and place robot. A simple robot, often with only two or three degrees of freedom, which transfers items from place to place by means of point-to-point -point moves. Little or no trajectory control is available. Often referred to as a bang-bang robot. Manipulator. A mechanism usually consisting of a series of segments, jointed or sliding relative to one another, for the purpose of grasping and moving objects usually in several degrees of freedom. It may be remotely controlled by a computer or by a human. Here we have to note, the words, remotely controlled by a human indicate that this device is not automatic. Intelligent Robot A robot which can be programmed to make performance choices contingent on sensory inputs. Fixed Stop Robot A robot with stop point control but no trajectory control. That is, each of its axes has a fixed limit at each end of its stroke and cannot stop except at one or the other of these limits. Such a robot with at degrees of freedom can therefore stop at no more than two locations where location includes position and orientation. Some controllers do offer the capability of program selection of one of several mechanical stops to be used. Often very good repeatability can be obtained with a fixed stop. Robot Android A robot which resembles a human in physical appearance. Sensory controlled robot A robot whose program sequence can be modified as a function of information sensed from its environment. Robot can be servoed or non-servoed. Open loop robot. A robot which incorporates no feedback, i.e., no means of comparing actual output to command input of position or rate. Mobile robot. A robot mounted on a movable platform. Limited degree of freedom robot. 
a robot able to position and orient its end effector in fewer than six degrees of freedom. We will not discuss here the problem of the possibility or impossibility of actually creating a robot with a human soul. The subject of our discussion will be limited mainly to industrial robots, including those which belong to the family of Banban. Robots The application of these robots in the modern world must meet the requirements of industry, including functional and manufacturing demands and economic interests. Obviously, aesthetics and environmental considerations are also involved. The mechanical component of the design of robotic systems constitutes the main focus of our consideration. Historically, the development of robot systems and devices may be considered as the merging of two distinct lines of creativity. One early automation and watchmaking. And two innovations and refinements in industrial machinery. A brief description of some of these devices will be useful for illustrating these two lines. As long ago as 400 to 350 BC, Archytas of Tarentum, a Greek, built a wooden model of a pigeon actuated by a steam jet. In about the first century AD, Hero of Alexandria designed a number of devices actuated by water, falling weights, and steam. In about 500 AD in Gaza the Byzantines erected a huge water-operated clock in which the figure of Hercules struck the hour in an automatic manner. Roaring lions and singing birds were employed to impress foreigners by the Byzantine Emperor Theophilus, who lived 829 to 842. Roger Bacon, 1220 to 1292, created a talking head. And at approximately the same time Albertus Magnus, 1200-1280, created an Iron Man. These two man-made creatures may be classified as androids. A magic fountain was designed in 1242 by a Parisian goldsmith, Guillaume Boucher. The German astronomer and mathematician Johanna Müller. 14,361 to 476, built a flying iron eagle. In the 15th century, a truly portable source of mechanical power was invented and applied, the coal tempered steel spring. This energy source stimulated the creation of a number of sophisticated mechanical automatons. In 1738, Jackie de Wankinson, 1709 to 1782, built a flute player capable of playing a dozen songs during the 18th century another group of gifted men jacket rose his son pierre his grandson henry louis and jean frederick Leshot, created several androids which wrote drew or played musical instruments the list of automatically actuated animals men birds and so forth is never ending and we do not need to discuss it in detail but two important conclusions do emerge. 1. This line of technical creativity was intended for entertainment purposes, and nothing productive was supposed to be achieved by these devices. 2. A large body of technical skills and experience, and many innovations, were accumulated by the craftsmen engaged in the production of such automatons. This amalgamation of knowledge, skills, and experience found application in the second line of development mentioned above, development of, and the drive for perfection in, industry. We have reason to consider the clepsydra, a type of water clock, as the earliest representative of robotic devices. Supposedly invented in 250 BC, it was able to recycle itself automatically. The centrifugal speed governor for steam engines invented in 1788 by James Watt, together with the system of automatically controlled valves, made the steam engine the first automatic device capable of keeping an almost constant rotating speed of the flywheel regardless of changes in the load. Analogously, the internal combustion engines invented in the 19th century serve as an example of another automatically recycling device realizing repeatedly the suction, compression, and ignition of the fuel mixture. The Industrial Revolution stimulated the creation of a number of automatically operated machines first in the textile industry and later in machine tools and other industrial operations. The most brilliant invention of this type was Jacquard's loom, 
which had a punched paper tape controlled system for flexible fabric pattern. Production. We will return to this example a number of times, but it is worth mentioning here that this machine, which was introduced into industry as long ago as 1801, was based on an idea which is applicable to almost every definition of a robot. I.e., the machine is programmable and is intended for the execution of a variety of fabric patterns. In 1797, Henry Mundsley designed and built a screw cutting lathe. The main feature of this machine was that it had a lead screw for driving the carriage on which the cutter was fastened and which was geared to the spindle of the lathe. Actually, this is a kind of template or contour machining. By changing the gear ratio practically any thread pitch could be obtained, i.e., the lead screw controlled a changeable program. Obviously. This is the precursor of the tracer techniques used widely in lathes and milling machines. The later tools are to some extent robotic systems. The further refinement of this machine tool led to the creation of automatic lathes of a purely mechanical nature for the mass production of parts such as bolts, screws, nuts, and washers. These machines were, and still are, mechanically programmed, and after two to three hours the currently produced pattern can be exchanged for another. Many such machines were first produced between the years 1920 and 1930. In the 50s after World War II, numerically controlled, NC, machine tools such as lathes and milling machines were first introduced into industry. These machines were, and still are, more flexible from the point of view of program changeability. At this level of refinement, the relative positioning between the tool and the blank had to be made by point-to-point -point programming of the displacements. When computerized numerically, controlled, CNC, machines replaced NC machines, the programming became more sophisticated, the trajectories were then computed by the computer of the machine. At this level of refinement the operator had to define both the kind of the trajectory, say, a straight line or an arc, and the actual parameters of the trajectory. Say, the coordinates of the points connecting the straight line or the center coordinates. And the radius of the arc, etc. Other improvements were made in parallel, e.g. Continuous measurement of the processed parts to fix the moment at which a tool needed sharpening, replacing, or tuning, computation of the optimal working conditions. Such as cutting speeds, feeds, and depths, and changing tools to cater to the processing sequence. We have described the development of the lathe as representative of the world of automatically operated industrial machines. Similarly, we could have chosen the development of textile machinery or, perhaps the most outstanding example of all, of printing. Techniques for the printing of books and newspapers had their origin in Europe. We do not know their history in China, in the 15th century when Johannes Gutenberg invented the first printing press. In the beginning the typesetting process was purely manual, being based on the use of movable type. This method remained essentially unchanged until the 20th century. The problem of mechanizing typesetting was first tackled by Otmar Mergenthaler, an American inventor who cast thin slugs of a molten fast cooling alloy from brass matrices of characters activated by a typewriter. Like keyboard, each slug represented a column line of type. This machine was known as a linotype machine, patented in 1884. In 1885, a short time later, another American, Tolbert Lawton, created the monotype printing press in which type is cast in individual letters. Further development led to the creation of machines operated by electronic means, which resulted in higher productivity, since one machine could process the material of a number of compositors. Indeed, the computerized printing systems available today have completely changed the face of traditional typography. In Corinne's book Robotics for Engineers, we find some additional definitions of robots. For instance, an industrial robot is defined as a programmable mechanical manipulator, capable of moving along several directions, equipped at its end with the work device called the end effector, or tool, and capable of performing factory work. 
ordinarily done by human beings. The term robot is used for a manipulator that has a built-in control system and is capable of standalone operation. Another definition of a robot, taken from the Robotics International Division of the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, is also given in that book, i.e., a robot is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator designed to move materials, parts, tools, or specialized devices through variable programmed motions for the performance of a variety of tasks. We read in Corrin's book that it is essential to include in the definition of a robot keywords such as motion along several directions, end effector, and factory work. Otherwise, washing machines, automatic tool changers, or manufacturing machines for mass production might be defined as robots as well, and this is not our intention. The question we must now pose is, what is wrong with defining a washing machine, a tool changer, or an automatically acting manufacturing machine as a robot? Are they not machines? Would it be right to say that washing machines do not belong to the family of robots when they act according to the concepts accredited to modern devices of this sort? And would it be justified to relate the concept shown in figure to the robot family? We will return to this example later when we discuss the concept of an automatic or a robotic system for the realization of a particular industrial task. We are, in fact, surrounded by objects produced by machines, many of which completely fit the above cited definitions of robots of higher or lower levels of sophistication. For example, times cans for beer or preserved foodstuffs, times ball bearings and ballpoint pens, screws, nuts, washers, nails, and rivets, times socks and shoes, times electronic chips, resistors, capacitors, and circuit plates, times candies and ice cream. The list can be extended through batteries and photographic films to many, many other products that are fully or partially produced by some automatically acting machines. The question arises how to determine on a more specific basis whether a particular machine is a robot and, if so, what kind of robot it is. For this purpose, we need to take into consideration some general criteria without which no system can exist. To make the consideration clear we must classify automatic machines in terms of their intellectual level. This classification will help us to place any concept of automation in its correct place in relation to other concepts. An understanding of this classification will help us to make sense of our discussion. So in the next video we are going to discuss kinds of robots. Hope you understand well. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video bye bye.